What is going on buddy? Welcome back to Walking Dead Mondays and today I'm here to do my review of The Walking Dead Season 8 Episode 14 entitled Still Gotta Mean Something. Before I do begin talking about this episode, it was a pretty good one, I will say that. But I'm gonna give a spoiler warning in case you're not caught up with The Walking Dead Season 8, but other than that, let's get started. So I really did like this episode because it, a lot of stuff happened and it was also like a connecting bridge to like the next two episodes and also the season four of Fear the Walking Dead. So I did like the episode and I'm going to get to all of it, but let's start off talking about the beginning with Rick not wanting to read Carl's letter. Now I understand why he wouldn't want to read Carl's letter because he's in the middle of a war right now. And if you know, he kind of already knows what's in Carl's letter because Carl was telling him in his dying moments. He was like, uh, you know, you can't, you can't just go kill everybody. You need to make peace. And he was telling him all this stuff and now and now um you know he's in the middle of a war so he kind of already knows what's in the letter and if he reads the letter he's gonna get upset he's gonna start crying he's gonna get emotional and then he can't afford to doing that right now in the middle of a war and then um so i did i part of me i did like it i did like how he did a read carl's letter he goes through this horrible thing against carl's uh, wishes and then he comes back and reads the letter i don't know why it's very fucked up but i did like it i don't know like what rick did was not a good thing but for some reason i did like it but i don't know why but I just did. But <laughs> that being said, let's move on and talk about Daryl and Tara. Um, now, uh, this is a bit underwhelming for me because uh, if you, in the comic book series, uh, uh, D- Dwight's shot doesn't shoot Tara because obviously Tara doesn't exist in the comic book series, but he shoots someone else. I'm just going to say it. He shoots Rick. And in the comic book series, the buildup is very nice and like we're waiting to see if he gets infected or not. But in the TV show, it's very underwhelming because everyone else already turned already. So I'm pretty sure Tara's, Tara's not going to turn. And if she does, that's going to be a big surprise. And that's going to get me like, whoa, I didn't see that coming but at this point we all know that Tara is not gonna turn and I kind of I'm not sure if I like it or don't like it I, I think the best way to describe it is very it's kind of interesting and kind of odd how Tara and Daryl both completely switch mindsets in like three episodes like in episode 11 Remember, uh, Tara was like, fuck Dwight, fuck Dwight, we have to kill him, we have to kill him. And then uh, Daryl is like getting all pissed off. He's like, no, we can't kill him, we can't risk doing that, we need him. And now in this episode, they're like completely switched mindsets. Like, Daryl's like, I'm gonna kill that son of a bitch. <laughs> and then Tara's like, no, you're not, we need we need him, he saved my life. Like, I don't know, I, I don't know if, again, so I don't know if I like it or don't like it, I just kind of find it odd and interesting in some way. But, that being said, let's talk about uh, Carol and Morgan, because I did like those two to going outside and talking. Because those two, they have, like, a really cool bond. Like, they're both pair. Like, uh, you know, uh, Carol, Rick, and Morgan. I like when those three talk and, like, um, those three are all together. Because, you know, they're, like, the most experienced. They all lost a child. Like, they all, they're very, you know, they have some stuff in common. So I did like when those, when they're talking to each other. And I did like the interaction between Carol and Morgan. And Carol, I did like how Carol was, like, coming to realize, like, Morgan is really crazy. Like, he's going kind of insane. And I did like it for some reason. It was very subtle. But, like, the way um Carol was looking at Morgan, like, her eyes, for some reason, I did like it. And you could see, like, uh, Carol's, like, a bit frightened, not frightened, like, I'm scared of Morgan, because she still accepts Morgan as a friend, like, a really good friend, but she sees, like, she's kind of, like, a little, like, scared for for Morgan, because she knows that that Morgan is going a little uh, crazy, especially when Henry comes, or when uh, Morgan hallucinates uh, and sees Henry, I did like that, I did like when he hallucinates and sees Henry, I liked it more than Gavin, now, obviously, when Gavin is saying, you know it, you know what it means, he obviously means that Morgan was supposed to be be the one who killed, um, uh, Gavin, but Henry did it, but, um, I did like when Henry was there, and added, uh, he added a lot more, um, uh, when he was saying, you know what it is, so I did like it, and then, uh, let's talk about, uh, Rick and Morgan, I did love these two, these two, whenever these two were together, I just fucking love it, because those two have been there since the beginning, the first episode, the pilot, and then when they were kicking the when they were kicking Savior's ass, I loved it. Oh my god! And Rick's mur- murder jacket is so awesome. Uh, I just love it so much. And I, I'm afraid it might be the last time we're gonna see this murder jacket because he just took it off and now he's getting ready to read Carl's letter. So it might be the last time we saw the jacket. So I did like it <laughs> how he wears his jacket and then just total chaos. And it's kind of funny how uh, Carl's telling Rick like no fighting, no fighting, and Rick just went fucking nuts. And this is the closest I've seen Rick to season five Rick in a long time and I know there's mixed feelings about the stuff that Rick did because yes it's fucked up but us fans you know we should be happy as fans like I know some fans are kind of upset and disappointed in Rick in Rick and I do understand why and I'm a bit like surprised I wouldn't say disappointed 
Uh, but I, I'm a bit surprised he would do that. I really didn't think he would do something like that. Uh, but, you know, seeing Rick, you know, like, this is the closest we've seen him at Season 5, Rick, in a, since Season 5. So I did like it. And I like that final shot where he was, like, um, where he, where the guy was saying his final words and he just shot in mid-sentence. That was, like, a callback to when the guy at the hospital, he was talking mid-sentence and Rick shot him again. And that brings me to my next point. There was a lot of cool callbacks this episode, especially there was one uh, when... Uh, when when Henry was hiding in that little, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, like that little thing in the pond or whatever, uh, where um, where uh, Carol went to and find him and then uh, saved him. That was a callback to, uh, that's where uh, Rick told uh, Sophia to hide. And it was very interesting and it had a lot of meaning to it because um, that's exactly where, uh, like that place was exactly where um, Sophia was, but Carol couldn't save Sophia, but she saved Henry. So that showed a lot. I don't know if maybe I'm looking too much into this, but I saw it as a sign off, you know, you know, obviously a callback, and then it also showed her character development, and that she could save people, and it showed it was a bit, like, sad that she could, that she saved Henry, but the same exact place her daughter was, she couldn't save her daughter, I don't know, it, it was a lot, and I did like it, and I'm, I'm even getting chills talking about it, because for some reason I did love this scene, probably my favorite scene of the episode, but... That being said, let's talk about Jadis and Negan. So, Jadis and Negan. I am a bit I am a bit frustrated with Jadis and Negan because The Walking Dead does this a lot. They do this a lot where we get this full episode of something. Like, they build it up the previous episode or whatever it might be. They build it up and then nothing happens. I'm like, come on. Like, literally nothing happens. Like, earlier this season, in season, uh, in, like, episode 6, I think it was, Rick went to the junkyard, people. He, got, he gets captured and then we have this whole episode of them arguing. And then at the end of the episode, he says, okay, truce, okay, same team, okay, let's go fight Negan. Like, like we had this whole build-up and nothing happened, and then they ran away. You know, they, uh, the savior started shooting at Rick and the junkyard people, and the scavengers ran away. I'm like, so we got that whole episode and a half, and nothing happened. And then this episode, we had this whole thing with, uh, you know, Jadis wanted to kill Negan, and then he captured Negan, and nothing happened. Negan just literally walked away at the end of the episode. I'm like, come on, it's a bit frustrating. But the, but the thing with Jadis and Negan, I do understand it more, because that helicopter again, again, it's weird. Jadis obviously connected to this helicopter. Like, I'm not sure if she was going to actually kill Negan or what was going to happen because we heard that timer and then she was like, she started panicking and she started waving her hand and the helicopter came and then uh, he went and then the helicopter left when, I don't know why they left. I think maybe they saw Negan or something. I'm not sure what's going on with this helicopter, but I will say I'm very, very, very interested because there was a timer because Jadis knew the helicopter was coming and then the helicopter just turned around and left when they saw Negan, I think. But I don't know. So I think Jadis might have actually was actually trying to kill Negan, and then when Negan was uh, got loose and then got the flare and was trying to uh, burn her pictures, I think that kind of stalled some time. And then uh, when the people saw Negan was there, I think they left. But I don't know. So I think Jadis has like some secret connection to a different group. I don't know what it is. I am like super, super, super um, excited uh, for this, and. I so I was kind of hoping Jadis would use Negan to get a Simon, but that didn't happen either. So I feel like this whole thing was kind of pointless, like nothing really came out of it. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess some sort of friendship between Jadis and Negan, but not really. I do see how they're trying to make Negan like more human and, you know, him talking about Lucille. I did like that. And then also, um, you know, him kind of talking to Jadis at the end, trying to make a friendship out of, uh, out of you know, trying to make a friendship with her. I So I do see how they're trying to make it more human so us fans can have a soft spot for him. Because I think I know it's going to happen in the season finale. Finale, uh, with Negan if you know the comics you know what I'm talking about but uh, I also want to talk about uh, you know the bar fight which is awesome uh, Rick and Morgan uh, went just completely bonkers and killed everybody which was insane and Jared's well overdue death oh my god that was nice I wanted to be more gruesome like Noah level but it wasn't even close to Noah's level um, I guess in some way it was kind of Noah level but uh, I did like how Morgan let go at the end and that was just like completely like that was like a big fun Fuck you to J a big fuck you to Jared, which is pretty funny and pretty cool and uh well over well do um death um and then I also want to talk about that final thing uh with uh him uh Rick asking Morgan like why did you save me and then Morgan saying because my son was there I love that oh my god I love that scene. And I do like how these two, again, like these two, they both lost their kids and they're so, they can, they both relate to each other. They go way back to the first episode. And I think uh, that's why, um, you know, that's why Rick went to go read Carl's letter because he's, he knows how much kids mean, obviously kids mean the world to you. And, you know, him hearing Morgan say the only reason I saved you is because of my son. 
he needs to go fulfill his son's dying wishes now. That's the way I looked at it. I don't know if I'm looking way too much into this, but that's the way I looked at it. You know, him seeing, uh, hearing Morgan saying, I saved you because of my son. I think that makes Rick say, you know what, I'm going to go fulfill my son's dying wishes and uh, go read his letter and do whatever it asks. And I think we all know what it asks in there is to save Negan's life. But that being said, I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. I want to know what you guys think of the episode. If you liked it, if you hated it, if you didn't like it, if you loved it, whatever you might think, leave in the comments down below. And I'll definitely get back to you. Thanks again for watching, guys. If you do want more Wackenev videos like this, stay tuned and subscribe to the channel. It's been All Things Film. And until next time, peace.